Brady, what the hell is this? Well, you know, we're talking about Whiplash today, so I thought I'd chain us together. Whiplash? Whiplash? Wrong Whiplash! I mean, this Whiplash. Whiplash, yeah, I've seen this before. It came out on Xbox and PlayStation 2 in 2003. I guess the GameCube missed out on this one for whatever reason. Hey, Crystal Dynamics, same people that made Soul Reaver and even the Gex games. Since I've talked about Gex before, I decided to look into it, and it turns out while the main team that developed Whiplash is different, there's many returning developers from Gex 3, including the art director, one of the animators, one of the sound designers, and one of the overall designers. So it looks like these guys aren't new to making platformers. With that said, why don't we give it a whirl? Here, I'll put it in for you. Thanks, Brady. You know how in most games you wait long enough at the title screen and it'll play a little gameplay demo or the reel of the opening? Whiplash just straight up shows the game's trailer. Complete with taglines, distracting interlacing, and a release window. Hey, it comes out this fall, I can't wait. Alright, so why don't we start a new game? Sounds good. I'm doing this right, am I, am I not? Am I doing something wrong here? You are in fact hitting the A button. What? You can't just change that, make the A button cancel and the B button confirm. It's set in stone at this point. It doesn't matter what console you're playing on, A means accept and B means back. And the weirdest thing is, it's just for the save screens. Any other confirmation, A is the confirm button. Anyway, the game starts up with a commercial for a company named Genron that produces all sorts of crazy things, but at the expense of horrific animal testing. It's even narrated by a godlike trailer voice. But how in the name of science do we do it? Lean in close. The secret is animals. This leads up to our two heroes escaping from captivity, a rabbit named Redmond and a weasel named Spanx. Alright, so which one of us is the weasel and which one of us is the rabbit? What? Well, you know, we're chained up. We gotta get in the character. Um... Okay, I'll be the rabbit. Yeah, okay, dude, you are totally the weasel. I'm not a weasel, you're a weasel! The object of the game is to escape from Genron, smashing absolutely everything you see as you go along. The more stuff you destroy, the more the company's value plummets. No, really, there's a number at the bottom of the screen that tells you how much exactly the company is now worth. The more you smash, the more that number drops. The controls feel pretty great. You actually only control the weasel, the rabbit is just painfully dragged along with you. Jumping feels precise and responsive, I never had a problem making jumps or judging distance when it comes to platforming. You can also run for a limited time with the shoulder buttons. Using this, you can also snap to and run on railings. All of your other moves are executed by swinging around Redmond in various ways, and I say executed like you're killing them or something because you smash this guy against anything and everything. It's how you'll take out the unfortunate employees of Genron Corporation. Combat is really simple, you've got a light attack and a heavy attack. Button mash until everyone's knocked out. It gets a tad more detailed as the game goes on, encountering people that'll block your attacks making you have to penetrate their defenses, but overall there isn't much skill to it. It's really repetitive, but it's dumb fun. The craziness of the situation and the relentlessness of the rapid attacking, there's just a stupid energy to it that makes it so mindlessly enjoyable. It's just nuts, you just bust everything up, you're like... <laughs> that looks painful. You can be the rabbit. Oh. Attacking isn't the only thing you can use Redmond for. For instance, swinging him around like a helicopter, giving you a slow descent. Again, just like Rayman's helicopter hair. You can also use him as a grappling hook by whipping him into an electrical prod, electrocuting the shit out of him as you swing from his frying body. Speaking of frying, you can just straight up light the poor guy on fire. I can't believe you just set me on fire! You literally set me aflame! This is one of the many power-ups you'll find that'll improve your attacking abilities in different ways. Others include electrifying him, freezing him, and making him radioactive. Each one will have a different effect on enemies, shocking them, freezing them, and even mutating them. They do serve some purpose outside of helping you fight, though. The electrical one will let you use powered down grappling prods, and the radioactive one will trick the security scanner into thinking you're in need of medical attention, allowing you into the medical division of Genron. But my favorite one is definitely the helium power-up. It'll inflate Redmond like a balloon, letting you float up to higher areas. You can then use Spanx's tail like a propeller, accelerating your ascent. Okay, so there's two health bars, one free tail. Animal. Well, the bar on the left is for Spanx, that shows your health meter. The bar on the right is for Redmond, that shows your combo meter and how much time you got left for the power-ups. As you attack, you'll gradually fill up the combo meter. If it gets full, Redmond will then go nuts and bounce around everywhere, attacking everything automatically. Effective! Crazy, unhinged, and borderline psychotic? But effective, nonetheless. One problem I do have with the game is the repeating dialogue. 
and I thought Gex was annoying. Oh yeah, it's tail time. That doesn't even come close to this. Okay, it's one thing to have lines of dialogue spoken when you do certain actions like attacking or whatever, but it's another thing for those lines to be long-winded banters. Wow, you know when you used me to smash that guy, then ran up there dragging me behind you, of course? Then you used me to slide across that rail, and then you stuck me in that thing? Remember that? Don't ever do that again! You'll have to hear this a lot, and it does get pretty annoying. I bet if you were to pitch his voice back down, we could hear what the voice actor really sounded like. Let's do it! What do you say we call it a day? I get a nap, you take a massive sedative injection, and we go from there. Wow! You know when you used me to smash that guy, then ran up there dragging me behind you, of course? Then you used me to slide across that rail, and then you stuck me in that thing? Remember that? Don't ever do that again! The game does have some decent humor, though. I get a good kick out of the Generon voice guy every now and then, but who could forget that part where you use Redmond to unclog a toilet? But most of all, there's the, uh... Oh my god! It's Roman Polanski! What?! Who's Roman Polanski? The... he's a, a director. He directed, uh, Chinatown and The Pianist. Why the hell's he here? I don't know. This is probably the most backwards, random ass thing I've ever seen in a video game. Roman Polanski is a minor villain. He doesn't even look like Roman Polanski. I don't remember him ever wearing glasses either. Maybe he's not Roman Polanski and Redmond just called him that for whatever reason? I don't know. And of course, they have to slide a direct Chinatown reference in there for good measure. Forget it, thanks. It's Chinatown. And then there's this character. Jesus, it looks like they took Cedric from King's Quest and gave him the Adam Jensen treatment. The only problem is, you see... <laughs> so what's the objective of this game? Like, what are you trying to do? Well, you're trying to get out. It's almost like a Metroid Prime game, but Genron's the big open world. Okay. You gotta look around different rooms, unlock different abilities, progress through the story. So I'm guessing when you get new abilities, that also unlocks new parts of the building. Yeah, yeah. Aside from escaping and destroying Genron's net worth, you're also encouraged to save as many animals as possible. Genron's locked up gorillas, skunks, hamsters, alligators, and everything in between, using them all for terrible experiments. You know, I, I wonder what PETA would say about this. Funny that you mention that, because rumor has it, PETA officially endorsed this game. You serious? Yeah, because you're like freeing animals and stuff. You're trying to get out of an animal testing facility, so it's it's got like uh, good messages against animal testing or whatever. But I mean, even still, there's a bunch of animal abuse in this game. Yeah, I couldn't find anything official stating that, but that's what people tell me. That machine's force-feeding alligators. It's like something you'd see in a Sonic the Hedgehog fanfic. The freed animals will even attack the Genron employees, making it easier to explore the area without the guards up your ass. That's what this game's all about. Exploration. It's all about finding the right path to your destination, navigating platforms, corridors, ventilation, and much more. It gets a tad confusing at times, though. Sometimes a door doesn't open until you've done something. What that something is, I don't know. There's been a number of times where a door wouldn't open even though I thought I did everything you had to do in the room, and then after dicking around for a couple of minutes, accomplishing nothing, the door's unlocked the next time I check. You are given a list of objectives to help you remember what it is you're supposed to do, but it doesn't always check them off when you do them. If you look at my objectives here, some are checked and some aren't. But the thing is, I've done all of them. I don't know what the deal is, but it did this to me in every area of the game, and it made me confused as to what I had already done and what I hadn't yet. The map screen itself is also pretty unreliable. It's a Metroid Prime wannabe, but the controls for the thing are just clunky as hell. Panning slow, selecting certain rooms is unresponsive, it's just, it's just a terrible map screen. But even with the clunky map and the completely botched objective screen, I still had a pretty smooth run through the game. That is, until the final act of the game. And what happens then? It becomes this big backtracking quest where you have to find a bunch of security cards to unlock the last area. Using newfound abilities, you'll be able to access rooms and divisions of Genron that you previously couldn't. And while I'm all for this idea, I mean many games, Metroid especially, have done this very well, it's just that the journey back to the room is very cumbersome. Navigating those long halls again and again, it's tedious. Not to mention, confusing, since it's the part of the game that stops being linear and now requires using that map to figure out where to go. I ended up looking up a walkthrough for this part. I just found it too confusing. 
But once I finally got to these unexplored rooms, the game became fun again. If only it had a better fast travel system or found some way to cut out all this confusing backtracking, the game's final act would be so much better. The game's main problems are grounded within the structure, but the gameplay itself is a lot of fun. It's competent platforming with a wide moveset that's fully realized in all the right places. So you enjoyed this game? Yeah, I liked it. Uh, I had a good time with it. I mean, it definitely has problems a lot of places, but it's still fun. So, sort of like uh, Vex then? Well, Vex had difficulty spikes. This is more of like a where do I go kind of problem. Oh, okay. So, can we take these handcuffs off now? Yeah, about that. Only if we can do a Punky Skunk review. Okay, Brady, if these guys want a Punky Skunk video, we'll do a Punky Skunk video. Alright. But, not until I do Blinks. Okay. And Blinks too. Alright. And, and Tekken. No. Screaming again from the. No, it, it, it helps me. It helps me. It helps me be in character.